Hey everybody, Scott here. You know, people love discussing who the greatest is. There's an expression, the goat, the greatest of all time. It seems like lately uh, when I go on ESPN or YouTube, there's always some video, some clip of a debate between two personalities talking about who the greatest basketball player of all time is. Is it Michael Jordan? Or is it LeBron James? Those seem to be the two names. Is it MJ or is it LeBron? Is it his heirness or is it King James? Incidentally, it's MJ. But I digress. Look, we talk about who the greatest basketball player is. They talk about who the greatest football player is. Who's the greatest quarterback? Is it Brady? Is it Montana? Uh, they talk about baseball players. And this sort of thing is not limited to sports. People talk about who the greatest president is. They debate over that. They want to know who's, who's the greatest uh, author. Who's the greatest pop star? What's the greatest song? What's the greatest movie? Film director? Actor? Novel? Whatever. There's even debates online, I kid you not, about who the greatest accountant postal worker and beekeeper are. It's insane. People have this innate need to know who the greatest is. Well, the disciples were no different. Jesus' final night on this earth, they spent a large amount of time arguing over which among them was the greatest. And all the while, in their midst, the actual greatest, not just of their time, but of our time and all time, indeed, all eternity, Jesus Christ, he was quietly preparing to demonstrate what in fact made him the greatest. He was going to do something that nobody expected the greatest to do. Humble himself and serve them. You see, Jesus didn't worry about any list. The thing about a list like that, a list of who the greatest is, there's got to be a standard. There's got to be something by which you measure greatness. And you see, Jesus was and is that standard. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What we can know without a doubt is that every single one of us falls short of God's standard for greatness. And in light of that, the debate might as well be, what's the greatest piece of debris on the bottom of my shoe? Because if we all fall short, it really doesn't matter who is the best among us us. The best news is if you go on, you read beyond Romans 3.23, you read verse 24 and 25, it says not only do we fall short, but we are justified by His grace, a gift through the redemption, the, the propitiation that is in Christ Jesus that God has put forth. You see, He is without measure because He is the measure. He's not just the measure, He's the means by which we who are fallen may be able to satisfy Almighty God. And all other discussion about who the greatest of all time is, it's really kind of a silly conversation because they're all revolving around a very specific, very narrow activity. Furthermore, the, the phrase of all time seems a little odd when you're talking about an activity that's probably less than 100 years old. By contrast, we serve a master who is from eternity and who demonstrated greatness by humbling himself to the form of a servant, even unto death, so that you and I can obtain freely eternity as well and know true greatness. Take care.